My name is Stephen Parsons. I'm a software engineer uh, working here at Fluke Biomedical. I, I've been uh, with the company for almost a decade now and have touched a number of our products including a lot of time spent on electrical safety analyzers. So I'm here today to talk about the NFPA 99 code, specifically things that have changed recently and some of the mandates and all that have been going on there so that uh, we can try and bring everybody up to speed and make sure any questions you might have on NFPA 99 are answered so that, that you can do your job effectively and, and in, in a way that's compliant to all the, the changes in the regulation. So NFPA 99 had a lot of changes come through, come through in the year 2012. So their 2012 edition had a number of changes. In, in 2012, not only did the standard change significantly, but then since that point, the, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, implemented a mandate saying that, that Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement was tied to compliance with NFPA 99 specifically to the 2012 or newer editions to, to try and encourage some conformity and compliance to the changes that were happening. So we're going to start going through some of those changes here in the upcoming slides. Uh, we wanted to highlight that not, not only did the NFPA 99 changes get adopted, but there were also changes to the NFPA 101 life science code, so that deals with your medical gas pipelines, a number of other infrastructure, but specifically we're going to focus here on electrical safety, which is all encompassed in NFPA 99. Uh, wanted to start off highlighting things that haven't changed, so hopefully this is this is uh, old hat and, and everybody's aware of this, but uh, dealing specifically with the test equipment that you're using, to test to NFPA 99 unchanged from past editions 2012 and newer still mandate that your test equipment needs to be checked and, and tested uh, for, for acceptable performance at least annually. I'll also highlight here on, on this slide as we get further on, uh, you'll see a, at the end of a, a number of the points there, there's a, a series of numbers. Those actually reference the NFPA 99 code itself. At the end of the presentation, I'll give you a pointer to how you can actually access the code yourself for free, which is a really great thing that NFPA has put forth as a standards body. So uh, summarizing here, uh, what we'll dig into over the next few slides, uh, NFPA 99 in 2012 had a number of things changed that are rather important to highlight and make sure that everyone uh, understands what, what all is different, uh, specifically the, the test for leakage dealing with each patient lead and ground was eliminated. That doesn't mean you don't have to test the patient connected leads, but that the, the mandate to test them individually was removed, which is really important for speeding up testing. The isolation test itself was completely removed, as well as testing uh, leakage current between one lead and every other lead for non-isolated and isolated inputs. And the decisions were made by the standards body for a number of reasons to streamline the testing, uh, to ensure, ensure that there's still a reasonable level of safety, but, but to improve things as times are changing and medical equipment is getting better and failing in, in different and maybe less frequent ways. So it's, it's the standards by trying to catch up to uh, what the realities are today for testing. Uh, not only do we deal with medical devices in NFPA 99, there are specific points calling out also uh, patient owned electronic devices so that that might deal with uh, somebody bringing a DVD player or something else. It's worth highlighting here that it's not just the biomed department that's responsible for, for ensuring that those devices are safe. There's actually a mandate that all clinical staff need to be looking at the, these patient devices, ensuring that they are safe, so they're clean, in good repair, the power cords aren't frayed. They're fairly basic things for visual inspection, but there still is that mandate. We understand a lot, a lot of times the clinical staff still uh, uh, call on 
uh, folks in, in clinical engineering in the biomed shops to, to enforce when there's a problem. But the mandate is that all staff should be aware that if it's plugged in and if it has a battery or uses electricity, there is a mandate to be aware that it is safe. It, it, it's pretty simple. It's not involving testing or anything else. It's just looking for that, that unserviceable, dirty, unsafe conditions on, on an end device. So for the most part, it shouldn't be an issue for, for day to day. But it, it was worth highlighting that that is something that was called out a little bit more clearly starting in 2012. Extension cords are a, a great topic. Everybody loves talking about extension cords. They're, they're often a, a trip hazard and, and often unsafe. You know, we don't, we don't want to be going and buying the cheapest possible thing for use in a hospital, of course. There are things in NFPA 99 that were also clarified in 2012 and newer, calling out that the power cords for it, dealing with extension cords are treated just like any other power cord. So you need to be looking at the strain relief, just like those hospital grade cords and outlets that you're used to dealing with, verifying that no more than 75% of the capacity is in use. I hope everybody knows cheater plugs are not okay. You can't remove the ground and use those three-pronged, two-pronged cheater plugs. And it's really just focusing on making sure that where the extension cords are appropriate for use, that they have good physical integrity the polarity of the, the cord has been tested so that, that hot is where it belongs and continuity testing the ground to make sure that you actually have a good, safe cord, just like you do for a power cord. Digging into leakage current. Leakage current is, of course, uh, where a lot of the, the big part of testing is for uh, electrical safety. Uh, specifically, we're going to start here with fixed equipment. So your, your fixed equipment, we're, we're looking to see if there is any hazardous leakage current for anything that's permanently wired from your blanket warmers all the way up to your CT and MRI machines. Everything that either has a cord that you, you're not allowed to unplug that's locked in or, or otherwise fixed in place or is physically hardwired into the mains for the building. You still need to be testing for leakage current on all the exposed metal with the 10 milliamp limit, which is carried over from, from the past. The important point to note here that uh, is sometimes overlooked is that the grounds are mandated to be lifted on your fixed in installed equipment. Otherwise, if you don't have a ground lifted, you're not going to see all the leakage current through your test equipment, some of it's still going to be going back through that ground. So to get the real worst case leakage, you have to be able to lift the ground on that fixed equipment. Uh, the, the other really big thing that changed for leakage current in the 2012 edition is NFPA started harmonizing with some of the other international standards like IEC 60601. They, did, they didn't adopt a lot of it, but they did change the name. So what, what we're used to hearing as enclosure leakage or a chassis leakage, that accessible metal on a, a, a piece of equipment has been renamed to be touch current. It's still a fundamentally the same test. It's just the name change from that chassis leakage to touch current, and that's, that's for that harmonization. It's important to note that it's dealing with all exposed metal, and that, that's good to highlight because the, the testing, even if the, the metal is normally connected to ground and earthed, part of this testing has that ground lifted, so it's still important to test all the metal to make sure that if there was a fault or a hazard, that the, the person using the, the, the equipment or the patient couldn't get shocked from it. We highlighted again here the, the test limits. These, these are, are pretty familiar, I hope, for most people that uh, with your normal polarity or ground connected 100 microamp leakage limit. It's important to note here that in 2015 and later, also the 2018 edition, they actually removed the requirement for testing with the ground connected but all tests, you still have to run that touch current or the, the chassis leakage with the ground open against the 500 microamp, the, the looser limit for that fault condition. Uh, 
We also wanted to highlight here, I know this is a pretty, pretty dense slide with a lot of information, but we wanted to highlight that in the cases where you have multiple devices all plugged in together, whether they're treated as part of a system or it's just a rack of equipment in an operating room or something else, if you do exceed the limit for the leakage current when you're testing things as a system, it is okay to break apart the system. What's important is wherever the plug is going into mains, however many things that it's connected to downstream, that all those things that are connected to the one plug are all tested together as a system for the total leakage current and, and making sure that everything is is still safe with everything plugged together. But if you have, say, say something plugged into your, your uh, auxiliary port on your anesthesia machine and the leakage current on that is too high, it is okay because it has its own plug to move that connection and put it, put it on its own connection on a power strip and test it individually separated from the rest of the system so long as you're following where the plug is it is acceptable to break things up, which is a great way to help fix some of the, the tricky problems you might get in those, those operating rooms or, or uh, complicated situations. So uh, I, I mentioned before, I uh, definitely want to dig into detail here on the, the patient connected leads, so your ECG leads, invasive blood pressure, anything that's electrically connected to the patient. The, the standard changed from 2005 to 2012. Now in 2012 and newer, the mandate is that you can test all of those patient leads together. It doesn't mean you can't test them individually like it was before, that's a more stringent test. But the faster test is to test them all in parallel and just to get a total leakage current across all the patient connected leads, and that is okay. You'll also note that in a number of these slides, there, there are repeated points that, that your device under test needs to be tested with it both on and off. That's of course most common with something that's a physical hard switch, but you can also have medical equipment now with, with soft power on off buttons where there's still electricity in the chassis. It's just the medical device hasn't fully started up. So it's, it's good to note that you still do have to test in both conditions for power. And then the lead leakage limits have basically stayed the same. It's just now you can look at them as the total leakage current with 100 microamps for the ground connected and 500 microamps for the ground being opened. I wanted to show here a couple of the diagrams in the, the parts of NFPA, NFPA 99 dealing with electrical safety, especially because we're encouraging everyone to be able to go look at the standard and, and use these references to dig in and understand the specific bullet points we're calling out. A couple of these uh, diagrams here are in there and they look really scary and unfamiliar, but I wanted to, to kind of break them down a little bit and spend a little time. I'm not gonna, going to beat them to death, I promise. Um, what's important is the, the points on both the diagram on the left and the right calling out the current meter. That's where, that's where your tester is, like from Fluke Biomedical, one of our ESA products like an ESA 612 would be considered your current meter. And it's important to see the difference between the diagram on the left dealing with the, the touch current or that chassis leakage shows the current meter going from ground, the, the ground at your outlet or a good ground point to the chassis of the medical device. So that's showing the box outlining it there versus the diagram on the right shows the current meter going from ground to the patient connected leads, which is the different part of the, the medical equipment. It's also worth noting here that uh, these diagrams have been simplified since a number of the, the test permutations about uh, polarity and things like that have actually been removed from the standard. You'll note that it's just the diagram on the left with the touch current for 2012 especially where you have a mandate to test with both ground connected and ground open that there's a switch shown there to show that the, the ground needs to be opened and closed. Ideally, if, if uh, your piece of test equipment can do that opening and closing for you, that's a lot easier and safer than uh, trying to disconnect things inside a power cord and whatnot. So trying to summarize, uh, wh what does this all mean? Why, why does it really matter? There's still a mandate to test electrical safety. At initial inspection or acceptance when you're bringing your medical equipment in, 
and during all open case repairs. So there isn't that mandate to do electrical safety annually, but anytime you do a repair or are working on the medical equipment, you do need to be making sure that the, the electrical safety testing is performed to make sure that it's still safe and that everything's connected correctly after everything's done. It is worth noting that visual inspections are mandated annually so that's looking at your your power cord strain relief making sure the chassis isn't cracked and broken all all of those uh basic things that, that, that we're used to looking at just visually does it look like it's intact and going to be working correctly and that is still mandated for every scheduled and unscheduled maintenance activity on a given piece of equipment So uh, I just wanted to try and break down here uh, so you don't have to go through the whole standard. Um, this list actually was quite a bit longer before for the older versions of NFPA 99. So now in 2012, it's five lines total that we're, we're looking at depending on how, how you break down the, the table here. But you're, you're looking at your ground wire, your, your ground wire leakage that's permissible for your fixed equipment and then checking your touch current and your lead to ground leakage for your patient connected parts. So I, I gave you the teaser at the beginning of the presentation. It's, uh, we, we really love this and want to highlight that NFPA is one of the only standards bodies in the world that doesn't require money to change hands to get access to the standard. Of course, there's a catch to this. They still do need their revenue to be able to support their, their standards body and the activities that they, they do. So you have to look online. You can't look at it offline. You have to be connected to the internet. It's only in your web browser. So you can't download it, print it, or copy and paste from the standard. But you can look at it anytime you want. You can leave it open. You can reference the entire standard cover to cover. And it's the exact same version that you would get out of a PDF or a printed copy. So we've got a link to it in the presentation here as well as a QR code. If you'd like to scan that, that'll jump you right to the uh, NFPA webpage describing how to gain the, the free access. They just need a little bit of personal information so they can keep track of who's viewing what. And, and in exchange for that information, they're, they're granting access to the public for free, which is really great. So everything through this presentation had those uh, bullet points called out, the, the six dot something or other or 10 dot something or other deal with the chapter and verse out of the code so that you can go through and understand the details of what's actually called out. And of course, we, we always want, want to highlight that, that in addition to this webinar and the other training materials that we offer on our website, we also have our Advantage training platform, which is available as a courtesy of Fluke Biomedical, which gives training on not just electrical safety, but a wide variety of biomedical test products and needs and dealing with quality assurance and everything else in standard practices to make sure everyone's as, as well educated as possible. Uh, we definitely recommend going going in there and, and signing up and having a look at the different content that's available to you to, to find anything that you might need to brush up on or that you need to, to learn that, that might be new to you.